Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, Geo here. It's been a minute, I am fully aware that this is a super late video. Probably all of you have moved on to other stuff, but I wanted to cover the spring 2022 uh, anime season. I made sort of a first impressions and which shows you should watch a couple months back, like five months back, I don't know. But I decided, you know, I gotta cover it. I gotta talk about it. So let's get started. I think there was a total of either 42 to 46 shows. I said, you know what? There's a lot of good stuff coming out. I think I want to cover as much as humanly possible. And I had to stop at 20, I think it's 26 different shows. It, was, it, it got too chaotic. I don't know how some of the more uh, popular any tubers is that the proper term i don't know how they do it um i was <laughs> i was losing my mind with so many different shows plus paying attention to the books i'm reading and streaming that i'm doing on other channels and stuff like that but nonetheless here we are talking about some good old anime healer girl i believe this was done by studio three hertz I didn't know about the studio, I didn't know about the series, but I liked the uh, poster for it and the premise was interesting enough. Also, quick side note, I'm running things off uh, what I remember of these shows, which I think will be funnier for you because I don't know if I'm going to be able to fully describe all the different shows that I have listed here, but we're going to try. So back to uh, Healer, I really enjoyed the premise of it. It is essentially this alternate reality where um, we have a new branch of medicine and that is music. You heal through music. It's a really weird but yet really interesting concept. The idea that in real life uh, they say like music can heal the soul and, and, and it's good for you to listen to certain frequencies and people always say stuff like that. So this series takes that to an extreme and actually has people uh, singing and using music to heal, to help heal. And it works in conjunction with the other uh, types of medicine and all that stuff. I thought that was a really fascinating topic. And you have three main characters, three young girls who want to be professional healers and they're starting out as um, apprentices or rookies or whatever. And throughout the series, they get better and better and get um, go through exams and stuff to get a license, and just like a regular uh, medical professional would do and all that stuff. I thought the music was absolutely captivating and beautiful. At times, I got a little misty-eyed. There was something very emotional and raw about the performances and this show essentially turned out to be a musical which i didn't think i was going to be a fan of i didn't think i was gonna go down that road of watching a musical anime but healer girl i thought it was pretty cool it's only i think it was only 12 episodes and out of the 12 like half was devoted to what I actually wanted to see, which was the healing aspect and the, the with the surgeries and, and all that stuff. Most of the episodes are dedicated to the girls, uh, the three girls and their journey uh, in school and camping out and stuff like that, which is, oh, it's, it's fine. But when you have such an interesting concept and you're playing around with the concept of music in the medical field, I kind of wanted to see more of that. Still, animation was solid characters were good, the concept was interesting as hell, so I definitely would recommend it. Plus the freaking music and singing, expertly done. Ascendance of a Bookworm Season 3. Finally, my favorite isekai returns. I am so happy about it. I love the series so much. Now we have new adventures as mine is working towards her goal of printing uh, books. And there are of course a lot of people that are against that because they would rather rule through fear and people not being educated and stuff like that. Of course, there's the whole magic aspect to it. The ending of this season 
really paves the way for some epic storytelling in the uh, upcoming seasons. Hopefully it does get renewed for a fourth one. I haven't read the manga, I've only seen the show, but I am super excited to see what happens next. There's a huge twist towards the end that I did not expect. Uh, the season started out pretty tame. I mean, mine is fighting off these uh, nobles and uh, merchants that don't really want her to succeed. And when I say fighting, I mean more like a political play, not actual <laughs> fighting. Um, so that was interesting. Then there are subplots of an orphan kid that shows up a baby at the uh, orphanage. And what happens to that kid? Mine herself, there's stuff that happens. She is being targeted by assassins and kidnappers and stuff like that. And it all leads to a pretty awesome confrontation at the end that really shakes the status quo for all the characters in this series. Tomodachi game. I don't know what I was expecting. This is a series that really uh, surprised me because I thought it was so well regarded, at least the manga. I thought I was really going to enjoy the anime. I liked several aspects of it. Essentially, you have these kids and they get involved in this deadly uh, survival game uh, where their friendship is put to the test and they have to rely on their trust and knowledge and companionship to get through the games. They have some debt, money debt <laughs> on their heads. And if they lose, the, the more debt they get, or they can pass that along, so it's a strategic game. The concept is interesting, but I did not like the animation whatsoever, and I really disliked 90% of the cast of this show, including the main character. And, and I get that's sort of the point. You're not going to have a lovable protagonist, that's fine. But everybody was just so... Uh, so edgy and I hate using that because it's an overused word these days to describe characters but it was a really edgy show and a lot of edgy characters saying really edgy things have I said edgy enough probably not I mean if the show would have gone a different direction maybe I would have liked it but each episode just kept escalating on the craziness with really random plot twists and uh, having the whole confusing rules per game, just, I, I don't know, it was the least exciting uh, death game survival uh, show that I've seen. I, I, I was mostly interested just to see what the hell was going to happen next in terms of the overall plot. I'm Quitting Heroing is super unexpected. I didn't think I was going to like it as much. You have this character that has a lot of secrets to him. He is sort of this chosen hero type character, the savior of the world, and he suddenly decides to turn his back on humanity after many years and tries to recruit himself as a lackey for the villains that he used to fight, this um, demon lord uh, dragon princess, and a lot of comedic things happen because of it. I won't go into details, but there's a twist when you find out the character's origin that I was not expecting, and it really elevated what should have been a mediocre uh, fantasy comedy series, action comedy, into something a little bit more special. The characters are really fun, the animation's not that great, but I enjoyed the plot and the twists and turns that I do recommend it just on that alone. Give it a shot if you're interested. Birdie Wing. What the hell did I think of Birdie Wing? It, it, it's it's a bad show, but it's so bad that it's freaking great, and I loved it. It's this uh, wonderful gay mafia uh, golf sports anime that I cannot recommend enough. It is so absurd. You have some of the craziest characters in sports anime history. The whole fact that it's golf of all the sports that you can represent in anime form. You pick golf, you have a main character playing to support uh, friends and family, and then it transforms midway into like a regular sports series as the character, you know, finds a rival friendship and enrolls in the school by the end. So we get a promise of a season two, and I am so excited. I also watched the Pokemon uh, Hisuian Snow, I hope I said that right. 
it's essentially a three episode uh, digital thing that the Pokemon company uploaded to their YouTube channel that you can watch and uh, subbed or dubbed or whatever. And it's based off the Pokemon Arceus game. Really simple story, but beautifully animated. If memory serves me right, it is Studio Mappa, which uh, they, they do amazing work. And yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm so tired, sorry, of the Pokemon stuff with Ash and all that. I've always wanted to see the original games adapted in anime form, not just uh, like ONAs or OVAs or like a movie. I want a full-fledged series or maybe an adaptation of the Pokemon Adventures manga, stuff like that, instead of the Ash uh, stories. Shield Hero Season 2. I was so hyped that Shield Hero finally returned, but if you go back to my first impressions video, I quickly made note that the animation really suffered like the first two episodes that I saw when I made that video looked like I was watching the middle of a season and it was sort of like filler content. And I was a little bit worried about that. And oh boy, I was pretty much right because this season was all over the place. I mean, uh, from what I've gathered for uh, from the manga side of things, people weren't super excited because the whole turtle deity thing isn't the most exciting thing and they said oh wait until that's over because the next stuff is pretty exciting so i was doing that because honestly the whole turtle stuff could have easily have been solved in like a film's worth uh, running time like a good 90 minutes you could have knocked that story out but instead they dragged it out i think they did six or seven episodes and that led into uh, the team of now and gang crossing into another dimension and you meet a whole bunch of characters over there it's an isekai within an isekai and that stuff was really exciting but it was so rushed it was six episodes of a story arc that could have easily filled out the whole entirety of the season it was it was all over the place poor pacing rushed uh the characters just looked bad and overall just uh really disappointed by it i am looking forward to season three because it has some new characters that people are hyped uh, for. I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully the animation improves and we get a better show as a result. Daemon Recipe for Happiness. This is sort of a slice of life with this girl that runs away from her father, I think. And uh, she starts working at a bakery. Uh, the It's a, like a mom and pop shop and the family there they have a, the mom and dad they have a son who comes back uh he was this failed indie artist i, I don't know if i if i'm saying it right i don't know if he was successful or not i don't remember the thing is he was a musician now uh he's going back into the whole bakery thing uh sort of uh you know he defied his parents and wanted to do his own thing which i think a lot of people can relate to and he forms a bond with the girl and essentially sort of becoming uh, her father figure. It's a really nice, wholesome series. However, in the midst of all the chaos that was happening in my life during these three months, I was barely paying any attention to uh, Dayamon. But most of the episodes were nice, fluffy, wholesome shows that I highly recommend if you just want to lay back and get a really nice uh, drama slash comedy. I thought it was worth it. Uh, maybe on a rewatch one day, I'll get more out of it. But overall, just a nice uh, middle of the road, uh, beautifully uh, written show. Comey Can't Communicate Season 2 or Part 2, whatever you want to call it. It's more of the same. Comey getting new friends, new adventures. Eventually, we got to a point where the last or like episodes out of the 12 episodes, 9, 10 and 11 just looked really off. Like they got the C team over there to work on it. I was really uh, concerned. I even tweeted about it because I thought it was just so random that we got some really, really rough animation for Comey Can't Communicate. But overall, more of the same. Uh, take it or leave it. I thought it was fine. Just a, a nice slice of life adventure with these cast of characters going through school life and Comey, of course, getting over her social anxieties and meeting new people and friends and new experiences, which is always great. Miss Shadow... I'm going to butcher this. 
Miss Shachiku and the Little Baby Ghost. If you take Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, take out all the etchy stuff and the dragons and replace it with an overworked girl working at this office in Japan and switch out the dragons with uh, Yude or Ghost, that's sort of what you get in this series. The ghosts are absolutely adorable. Some of the cutest characters to have ever graced TV screens on, in, in the entirety of human history. It is that absurdly cute. Just a nice uh, comedic slice of life series. They get into several hijinks. It's a pretty easygoing show. Uh, nothing too major when it comes to the plot but just the dynamic of having the little ghost girl. Uh, she's so adorable and just wants uh, the main character to rest and not overwork herself to death. It's pretty sad that we have to have a show like that because that stuff happens in real life. But nonetheless, I'm glad that this exists because it is such a, a funny, wholesome little series that I would look forward to, uh, to sort of, um, relieve me of my stress of a uh, hectic week. I think it aired on Thursdays. So I really enjoyed watching it. They get into more adventures with other characters. There is a cat spirit that is super adorable and stuff like that. So if you're into the whole uh, yokai paranormal stuff and the uh, uh, cutesy chibi stuff when it comes to anime, I think you'll be right at home with this one. Skeleton Knight in Another World. It's another isekai. This character, uh, this man gets trapped into, or young adult, whatever, gets trapped in this fantasy world as his favorite uh, character, happens to be sort of this uh, skeleton looking dude, and he's trying to figure out what to do. He eventually befriends this voluptuous looking elf uh, girl. Uh, sorry, I have to make a parenthesis, but I uh, that's one of my favorite tropes in anime. I, I, I do love me some elves. Yay. So they go on an adventure. She's trying to help him cure the curse, as he puts it, but that's not really what's happening. He's just there in this skeleton body, and eventually through some hijinks, he ends up uh, helping her to free uh, the other elf girls that have been enslaved in this kingdom that's very medieval-esque with a lot of douchey uh, rulers and conspiracies and all that stuff. It's pretty freaking standard and it kind of borrows heavily from other shows and other, and hell, even the character designs, right? To have a skeleton uh, person, you immediately think of Ainz from uh, Overlord. So not necessarily the most original of the bunch but it was still funny enough and i did like that even though they were using cg to animate the the big fights and all that stuff it didn't look uh weird it wasn't as intrusive as other series it it, it felt kind of nice ya boy kong meme i hope i said that right i think this is one of my favorites and it's probably going to be on the list for favorite shows of 2022 i thought it was fantastic music series, you have a girl, uh, Eiko, she wants to be the top singer, and you have Kong Ming, who is a historical figure from the Romance of Three Kingdoms, and he ends up dying in his time period and gets reborn in modern Tokyo. It's uh, that type of series, displaced characters, and him fight, figuring out how things work, falling in love with Eiko's music, and promising uh, after befriending her and all that stuff, promising to be her agent and take her to New Heights. Of course, he has that strategy in mind from uh, wartime in China. So he's gonna utilize that, those strategies to make her the top artist in Japan with her uh, EDM and acapella and acoustic songs, uh, her English songs. Uh, if you love music, if you wanna celebrate life and uh, through music and artistry, I think this is a show for you. I loved it. It's by Progressive Animation Works. They're one of my favorite studios and they're adapting the manga, obviously. I think they did a fantastic job adapting it. Really worth your time. I highly recommend Ya Boy Kong Ming. Only 12 episodes. I think you're gonna love it. Heroines run the show, basically an idol series. I'm not a fan of idol shows. I typically avoid them. Uh, not my thing. So with this one, you have 
a wonderful girl and she is she gets involved with two popular idols that are going to the same school as her this high school in Tokyo or whatever she went there because she wants to be uh, a track star running and marathoning and all that stuff and she enrolls in that school and gets caught in hijinks with the idols eventually she keeps a secret that uh, they went through some things and uh, one thing led to another and she ends up getting a job as a in-training manager for the two boys. She doesn't really know anything. She's sort of a, a country girl, if you will, but she starts learning about them and why people love idols so much and all that. It relies heavily with idol tropes and uh, the fandom and the craziness of that stuff, which is pretty insane in real life. So I think they captured it pretty well. Uh, the ending of the series is super weak compared to the start. I didn't like the resolution for it. Some of the main conflicts towards the end just were super rushed and uh, just really weird the way the final conflict got resolved. I didn't think they were going to go down that route and everything would be resolved just like that, when in reality, if that were to happen in, in, in you know, in real life, uh, you'd be looking at jail time, you'd be looking at lawsuits, it, it'd be pretty interesting. But the main character steals the show and I would recommend watching it just for her and the voice actors. I think she did a phenomenal job and easily the highlight of that series. Summertime Rendering. This easily is on my list for best show of the year. I am absolutely in love with this series where you don't really understand what's happening. It turns out to be one of these series that um, they go into time loops and this mystery keeps repeating itself day after day. You have this character that is arriving to the, uh, his hometown on uh, coastal islands uh, in Japan and one of his friends passed away and there's a mystery behind it because they think she was murdered so he starts investigating and finds out there's a conspiracy in the island sort of these urban legends with shadows replacing people it gets crazy it gets weird and the whole thing is that when crap hits the fan and the character bites it he loops back to the start when he arrived at the island so now he gets another shot to solve things and that mystery keeps intensifying and more and more crazy stuff happens. I highly recommend it. The manga got published recently by Udon Comics and the show is stuck in Disney Plus jail. But nonetheless, I do recommend it. It is done by OLM, one of my other favorite studios. Just wonderful, beautiful animation. Character designs look really crisp, almost movie-like. I really recommend it. I think it'll be worth your time. And if you can't watch a show, get the manga. Love After Domination. This really surprised me, and this is one of my favorite comedies of recent memory. You have this parody of the Super Sentai genre. You got the, was it the gelato team of five rangers? Uh, they're all gelato themed uh, with the same colors that you would expect, you know, red, blue, green, pink, uh, and yellow. And they fight the gecko army, uh, this evil army of bad guys that want to take over the world and destroy everything. The plot twist is that the Red Ranger, or the Red Gelato, he is in love with one of the high lieutenants from uh, the gecko bad guy society or whatever. And uh, they're in love and they're trying to hide it from their respective camps and that leads to many comedic hijinks. I really enjoyed this. It's a very sweet, funny series that if you like monsters, kaiju, mechs, sentai, super sentai stuff, you're really going to enjoy it. I thought the comedy was cute and pretty well paced. And it's the type of show that you can tune in and have some fun, switch your brain off and just enjoy it for the craziness and move on with your day satisfied. Kaguya-sama season three or ultra romantic. I wasn't huge into the first season. It took me a bit to fall in love with it. I thought season two was much better and improved on everything from season one. The jokes were better, the comedic timing, the character performances of the voice actors and all that stuff. So with this, now it's a well-crafted, oiled machine. The characters are fantastic. 
there's uh, more lengthy arcs of stories instead of like the previous seasons where it was heavily episodic uh, with many adventures. Now we have long chunks of story playing out through several episodes, all culminating in the school festival where something major happens. Could we see the confession that we've all been anticipating? Well, I don't want to spoil it, but you're going to have to watch to find out. I didn't like that the finale was an hour long. That was great. The animation's just as good as the other seasons. And by now, all these actors, they just know their roles perfectly. And you're just going to love it. It's wonderful. I highly recommend it. If you've never seen it, definitely give season one a shot. I think you're going to be a fan pretty quickly. The Executioner and Her Way of Life. This took me by surprise. I didn't know I was going to be liking an isekai Yuri heavy uh, series that plays with the tropes and plays with the notion of being an isekai series, being off world, and how it literally is the foundation for the entire series. You see, this is a world where people, uh, they get isekai into and this sort of alternate earth where it's heavy on magic and spells and all that stuff. They feed off the energy that these kids have, and it builds into the society of it. There's a quick spoiler that I'm going to reveal, but at the I think it was like episode three or two, you find out that uh, everybody in this town, aside from their original language, they know Japanese thanks to all the isekai uh, characters, all the boys and girls that are being uh, thrown into this new world and their knowledge of Japan and their technology has influenced this new world and sort of become like a cult or a religious uh, affection towards these kids and this other place in, you know, in our area, our world. However, the overabundance of this and the energy and all that, it gets pretty technical and convoluted. It sort of reminded me of like the magical girl stuff, like the, the new magical girl stuff that goes dark with its themes and all that. Um, it sort of reminded me of that, plus the Fate series. Um, so all of this excess magic and the influence from these isekai kids uh, led to some calamities that cost the lives of many thousands of inhabitants in this world. So now uh, this uh, part of the church, they seek these kids and they want to take them out and kill them uh, with the ruse that they're going to send them back to their original world, but they're actually executing them. The main character here uh, is tasked with doing that with uh, another character. I don't want to reveal it, but let's just say that as the series progresses, there's a lot of exposition and world building, so keep attention to what you're watching. It isn't like the other shows that I mentioned. I did like it. Some people were not 100% on board, but I did love the character designs and I did like the whole concept of, uh, you know, the fact that it's an off-world series and isekai and that being the basis for everything, sort of the, the glue that binds this world, that world together. I thought that was pretty cool and it made me a fan. So I am looking forward to a season two or maybe I am looking forward to reading the manga. We'll see. I'm going to butcher this one. Ahaden san wa hakarenai. I hope I said that right. Pretty simple story, romantic comedy, uh, kind of bizarre comedy at first of these two characters. One, she is super tiny, cute, and pretty hilarious with her deadpan humor. And then you have the guy in this equation who's kind of a klutzy buffoon at first, but you get to fall in love with these two characters as they become friends and get into some hilarious situations. There are a lot of um, cutaway gags and references to other stuff from Shonen Jump and other anime and stuff like that. So if you're into that type of comedy, you'll be right at home with it. It doesn't get too serious, maybe a little bit towards the end, but it's more on the emotional side. Really fun characters that you want to root for. Uh, just a silly good time, in my honest opinion. Dance, dance, dancer. I think I probably said that wrong. I didn't think I was going to fall in love with a ballet themed anime, but again, this might be one of my favorite shows of the year. I absolutely loved it. You have this kid 
that um, he's he's always wanted to get into ballet, but social norms dictate that you can't do that because that's for girls and that's kind of weird and you want to get into that. So his father gets him to try out, uh, I think it was Taekwondo or karate or some martial arts. Uh, sadly, his father dies early in his life and that sort of stunts his potential growth and he's sort of stuck in this place of wanting to please the other boys by participating in every club, like the sports club, music, martial arts, and not really fulfilling his passion, which is dance and ballet. He gets an opportunity when he meets this girl that her mom has the studio, and in that studio, she has a cousin, the girl, who is this introverted young kid who has gone through some really heavy stuff there's some really heavy subject matter in this, but I think it's a worthwhile story. It's a great emotional story of growth, the main character, to see him at the start not really take it seriously and have this sort of epiphany and awakening that this is what he was meant to do and go through all the motions of finding out that, oh, I am talented, but there are people that are better than me. So I gotta work at my craft. I gotta understand that I'm jumping into this new territory. People are gonna look at me weird. It doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna keep moving forward and doing my thing. That type of show, beautifully crafted. I, I yeah, the proportions of the characters, you know, they're based off the manga. A little bit weird with the long necks and the eyes circles the rings inside the eyes. It was just a little bit off-putting at first, but I got used to it pretty quickly. I do recommend it. Wonderfully animated, a beautiful story. I'm really excited for season two. This was one of my favorite shows of the year. Love All Play. I'll be honest with you, this is one of my least favorite shows of 2022. I think it's just okay. You have this character that wants to get into this prestigious school and try out badminton. He loves the sport. And fun fact, I do too. I actually played it back in the day, really fun. So he gets, he goes into the school and plays the sport and you have all the usual tropings when it comes to, tropings, is that the word? Whatever, all the usual tropes when it comes to sports anime with the drama of meeting new teammates, forming uh, those bonds. Of course, there are the students that want to uh, put their rookies through hell. Uh, they get into the first tournament together, uh, singles and doubles, practicing, people get injured. There's, there's drama involved with certain characters. You've all seen this before. It's a beautifully crafted show and the voice cast is great. And it's, it's a competent, middle of the road sports drama. Um, unfortunately, I didn't stick with it. I watched the first half, the first 13 episodes. It's still airing as of this video. I, I didn't go back to it. I didn't go back to it because I had other shows to watch. But if you want a, a, a nice, solid, dramatic sports themed show, Love All Play could be it. Speaking of odd sports, Fanfare of Adolescence. This was an original anime. And this is based off of jockeys and horse racing. You have a main character who is this former idol. He quits and he wants to pursue his passion, which is horse racing. Of course, the agents and the fans don't take it too well. There's controversy. He enlists in this private school for jockeys and you meet all the other characters and they all have big dramatic stories and all that stuff. And you go around the series examining each one. A lot of heavy stuff happens in dramatic moments and the whole learning how to race and connecting with the horses. It was really interesting. And the music was absolutely special because of course, um, uh, Sawano is working on it, which is always great. One of my favorite music composers. But overall, I just didn't find it super interesting that I wanted to keep going. I did finish the whole series but it wasn't something that I was looking forward to. The premise was interesting, but the pacing and direction was a little bit all over the place. There were a couple of interesting stories and a couple of interesting things that happened, but the overall cohesiveness of it wasn't as enticing as I would have liked. In the heart of Kunoichi Zubaki, this 
is another silly series that I kind of really enjoyed and I do recommend watching. Essentially you have this tribe of Konoichi female ninjas. They've never stepped foot outside the, the their land and they don't know what men are like and they've never met a member of the opposite sex. Tsubaki, she's a wonderful character. I really enjoyed uh, her arc and her story and the way she interacts with the other uh, ninjas. The animation is probably the best thing about this show. It is fantastic and I really enjoyed watching high ninja moves that I've seen on like freaking Naruto or whatever. Uh, just expertly drawn and animated. Really cool stuff that I wish other ninja shows uh -huh, would emulate and, and had that sophistication. Like throwing a, a, like a fireball jutsu or a substitution or a clone jutsu all looked really solid. Granted, this was only 13 episodes, whereas other ninja shows are like hundreds of episodes, but you know what I mean. The series has some jokes because they don't know what men are like and they kind of repeat the same jokes all throughout. And most of the series is just dedicated to examining all the, the many squads within the tribe, uh, the, three men, the three women squads, I should say. And they're all fun, funny, wholesome characters. Some are crazy, others are just plain weird. But overall, it's just a fun, simple series. Spy Family, finally it aired, just a wholesome series. Anya is one of the best characters in manga, and now she's one of the best characters in anime. Just a really nice uh, twist on the whole um, spy genre and having characters come together to form a family. Uh, they're all fantastic. The series is expertly drawn. I believe it was uh, Cloverworks and Wood Studios, if I remember correctly. Expertly drawn, great characters, solid adaptation of a very popular manga, that I've read, I'm not up to date with it, but I have read a, a, a small chunk of it. And I thought they did a really good job of bringing Spy Family to life in animation form. And obviously the, the highlight, the, the, the show stealer is Anya with her crazy kooky uh, eccentric nature and her abilities and all the crazy stuff that she gets involved with and just how damn cute and wholesome she is, as well as her parents. Spy Family, easily one of the best shows of the year. Highly recommend it. It's a show that everybody can watch and enjoy together. I highly recommend it for non-anime fans wanting to watch something more recent instead of the usual stuff that people like to recommend. Try Spy Family out, you'll love it. Shikimori is not just a cutie. I remember doing the first impressions and I was not that impressed. It's essentially a story based on a feeling towards your boyfriend or girlfriend. And that's it. Uh, you have these two characters that love each other. Shikimori, uh, she's cool. She's a badass. And that's it. That's the whole premise of the show. Just them getting to know each other, I guess, getting to know each other a little bit more, uh, forming uh, deeper relationships with each other. And of course, the other kids in the high school or middle school or whatever. It's that, <laughs> and they go on episodic adventures in school and uh, like dates and all that. It's great, but there's not much of a substance there with the plot other than characters deepening their bonds with each other, I guess. I don't know. It did lead to some wholesome scenes, but overall, it was just a really fluffy type of show which I'm not opposed to. I love watching every type of anime, every type of show out there. I just thought it was funny that the plot is just based off a feeling, a feeling towards uh, your uh, loved one and not like this happened, so now they're gonna do this and force stuff to happen because of plot reasons. No, it's just a chill time with kids in high school uh, going about their daily lives and uh, loving each other and being friends and all that stuff. <laughs> the final one on this list, Don't Hurt Me, My Healer. I really enjoyed this. It's essentially this parody of like Souls games, for example, this RPG element uh, with the medieval uh, aspect and Souls aspect to it with uh, the creatures and the magic effects and the healers and the elves and all that. You have Carla, possibly one of the smartest, cunning, 
and overall annoying characters of all time and I absolutely loved it. She is one of my favorite characters from the shows that I talked about on this episode. Love the series so much. Uh, the main character Alvin, he is a wimp. He sucks. He's a horrible uh, rookie adventurer but he gets tangled up with Carla, this uh, elf, and she is such a smart ass that you can't help but love. Uh, she will annoy you at first, but just go with it, because I think that's the charm of the series and how she just twists everything, all the narratives to suit her and how um, she, how much of a smartass she is. It's super annoying, but really funny at the same time. And I just fell in love with the series and I loved every single episode. It was really funny. Uh, animation is nothing to write home about. It's just perfectly okay but her relationship with Alvin and the other members of a party that forms is really funny. Uh, so if you're into RPGs and Souls-like content, video games, and you like a comedy, I think you'll be right at home with Don't Hurt Me, My Healer. <sighs> oh, Jesus. I'm done. Okay, so that was the episode. It was super long. Thank you so much for hanging in there. I know, I know. You'd rather see the voiceover stuff with like overlays and trailers and all that stuff. But I was super late making this. It's been a rough couple of weeks for me uh, to create content on the platform. And it really, I really struggled and suffered because of it. But I'm sort of back and I will be making more videos uh, frequently. I'm just uh, hopping on that train again, getting my groove back on. Uh, so thank you so much. If you want to see more stuff like this, uh, reviews and first impressions, talking about anime and manga, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. A Week in Geekdom is this channel's name. Geo here signing off. Thank you so much. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next episode.